What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, this channel brings again, again, uh, Dexter Henry from Sny TV, uh, New York Post, and so another <laughs> projects <laughs> about this guy. I love this guy. I love this guy, and and so happy bring you again in Nick Fans Brazil. Welcome. Welcome Thank you. again. <laughs> Victor, it is good to be back. It feels like I just saw you. Feel like we just talked, although things have changed since we last talked. But uh, I I'm very happy to be back. Knicks fans, Brazil. I, I love being on it. Uh, a lot of support from the fans I saw from the episode we talked. Uh, beautiful Knicks fans. Love the energy. And uh, yeah, man, just happy to be back. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. The first interview, né? Two subjects in the in this interview. But uh, I want to make uh, the first, the first, the first question. Dexter, in the last interview, mm -hmm. <laughs> we talk about né, the, the, the biggest né, rumor. Unfort unfortunately, don't write. Okay. So uh, I want in this channel your opinion, your opinion uh, about this case né, uh, from uh, Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, what's your opinion in this situation? Né? Uh, wrong, né? Final, the, the bad final from the Knicks and the Knicks fans. What's your opinion about this? Yeah, so my opinion was when it first went down and Donovan Mitchell got traded to Cleveland, I was shocked. I'm going to be honest. I was shocked. Everything I'd heard from people I spoke to um, around the Knicks, who covered the Knicks, was that it was just a matter of time. And I think I even said that the last time I was on your show. It was a matter of time. It would get done. I thought the trade to the Knicks would get done before training camp. I thought Donovan Mitchell would be a Nick. I just thought it was a matter of time, and it was about what the Knicks would give up if they were going to get Donovan Mitchell. Um, seeing what the Cavs got and thinking about it, I also was, and I did say this on your show the last time, I wasn't going to be completely disappointed if they came back with the roster and ran it back with the young players. I thought that could be a good move. Um, I would have been fine with that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But I think that the Knicks are going to be okay. They're going to be fine here. <coughs> I'm really sorry about that. Something got caught in my throat. The Knicks are going to be fine here. Um, I think they assessed the situation. They looked at the price. They thought it was too much for them to pay. If you look at the final offers that have been reported, um, there was a report that came out that said the Knicks offered R.J. Barrett. Uh, along with another young player and about three unprotected first. I'm going to be honest. I think if they went anything higher than that, it was too much. Um, I think the Knicks actually did the right thing here. That's what I'm going to say. I, I think they drew their line in the sand. Some media in New York has said, look, it's a failure. And I understand why people say that. The Knicks had targeted this guy. It is well and widely known. Donovan Mitchell wanted to play here in New York. That's also known. They didn't get him. So it's a strikeout. I understand how people can say that's a failure. But I also think it's fair to look at that and not kill the Knicks and say, hey, okay, they made the right decision here. They had a price above which they were not willing to go. It's too many assets. You can't just look at it. I've seen some Knicks fans talk, oh, well, the Cavs got him. The Cavs are in a different situation from the Knicks. They have two players on their team that were all-stars last year. Okay? They... And Darius Garland and Jared Allen. They have a young player uh, in Evan Mobley who I'm very high on and a lot of people around the league are very high on and think he can be a fantastic two-way player. So adding a guy like Donovan Mitchell to them in a market that is not really able to attract big stars is huge. And for them, they were willing to give up the unprotected picks and the pick swaps down the road when the Jazz are betting on them being bad. The Knicks don't still really have uh, a franchise player or a bunch of young talent that they're really sure of or know exactly what they are. I think there's some guys they value highly, like a Quentin Grimes, uh, maybe an Obi Toppin, but they're not in that same position. And I actually think the Knicks might have made the right move. One of the things I said last time, Victor, was Donovan Mitchell, I think he's a really good player, 
but he's not in that upper echelon of superstar that's going to elevate you to to another top. The key thing for me here, though, with the Knicks not making a move, and I've heard this from other Knicks fans and some people who might have seen some of my recent interviews with CP the franchise and Mark Berman, and I agree with them on this, is, okay, now it's time you have to play the young guys. We have to see what we have in Obi Toppin. This is what you have to say if you're the Knicks front office. We need to see this. You have to see what you have in Quentin Grimes. They can't be blocked by vets that you aren't going to think is part of the future. And that also includes Cam Reddish, who you traded a first-round pick for if you're the New York Knicks. You have to see what these guys can do. You have to give them the time. There's some question whether Tom Thibodeau will do that. I think Tom Thibodeau, and I said this on your last show, I think sometimes he gets a bad rap in terms of not playing young guys. We saw him play young guys before with the Bulls. It's just, are him and the front office going to be on the same page? And are we going to see 20 to 25 minutes a night for Obi Toppin? Are we going to see 20 to 25 minutes, if not more, for Quentin Grimes, who I think should start over Evan Fournier? These are things Nick fans are going to need to see. Play this young core, let them develop along with RJ and Jalen Brunson, and let's see what they can do. But if you're not going to play the young core, especially when you struck out on getting Donovan Mitchell, I think that would be a huge mistake. Man, uh, I totally agree. I totally agree with you. Né? I talk, I, I talk it né? Uh, with so many Nick fans uh, in this week. Né? Uh, the uh, more Nick fans uh, understand the situation than don't understand. Uh, in my opinion, né, uh, Utah wants so much. Uh, wants uh, uh, the price. Uh, mm -hmm. It's complicated price about uh, about the spider. I I agree uh, with your with your point, né? In the in the in this interview, and um, I, I agree with you uh, uh, about uh, younger players. I make it uh, Dexter in in our channel. The question, né? Uh, between uh, Grimes and uh evan fournier for mm -hmm. example uh more people uh prefer prefer grimes than uh evan fournier uh starter in this team for, for example uh, and uh <laughs> I, I i saw so many nick fans uh angry because <laughs> julius brando uh continue <laughs> in Knicks and I, I saw so many Nick fans uh worry né hurry about uh this rotation né with mm -hmm. uh Obi Taupin né Obi Taupin give uh Tom Chimbado né give uh more minutes uh, uh Obi Taupin né so it's complicated but uh, uh I I can imagine uh Knicks uh will be better comparated the last season no nah. and uh i, 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 I agree with Leon I think Rose they, in this negotiation i i think they can be i'm not sure how much better they can be and you would ask me this last time about that victor um I, you know i could see them anywhere 42 to 44 wins with the roster as it currently is if i had to make a pick and I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think you it would be good if you can see how those young players develop. But I definitely think they can be better for last year because of a couple of reasons. One, I think Brunson playing the point is going to just be better offensively. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he's going to help a lot of players. And one of the players I think he really can help is Julius Randle. Uh, yes. I think he can really help him in terms of yes. you're taking the ball out of Randle's hands a lot. I know Nick fans have been down on that. And rightfully so, I think too much was asked of Julius Randle. He did a pretty damn good job in uh, two seasons ago. And I'm not, I don't know this, maybe something personally was going on with Julius Randle, but I do think he's going to have a better season this year. I really do. The thing I think you don't want to see is, I know I see you, Victor, you're praying for it. I think you just don't want to see him block minutes for Obi. And, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day who was talking about, look, you got to figure out a way to get him 25 minutes a game i don't care if you have to play him at the five we know thibodeau likes to uh play you know rim running centers i'm sorry i think my mic dropped here 
Um, Don't you, worry. <laughs> you know, you know that likes to happen. Thibodeau likes to play uh, centers who can protect the rim, but I think you need to see a guy in in Obi who can play good in the offense and keep things moving, um, and and be somebody who can run the floor. And gives you a different dynamic with Randall. I think the thing for Knicks fans to keep a watch on, though, as this season goes, and we don't know how it's going to go, is are the Knicks still going to try? If they commit to playing these young guys, are they going to mm-hmm. try to move off of a veteran or two? Are they going to try to trade Evan Fournier or see if they can move Julius Randall at some point? It's going to be interesting to see if they do. Maybe there's a chance it could happen before training camp. I don't think it's very likely. But maybe there's a chance it could happen before. I know a lot of Nick fans would like to see it. I just think it comes back to what I said, Victor. If this is your roster, you got to be all in with the kids now. There's no time for games. There's no time for joking around. Play the kids, especially the ones you've drafted yes. and the ones that you believe in. From all accounts, Tom Thibodeau, this was told to me by Mark Berman in an interview we did a couple months ago. Tom Thibodeau was very high, as we know, on Quentin Grimes. He also has... Tom uh, Mark Berman told me in an interview that he also wants to find more minutes for Obi Toppin. When Mark said that to me in an interview, I was a little bit yes. shocked. I was like, okay, this is really good news. If you're a Nick fan who's been asking for Obi Toppin to play, Mark Berman re- reported this. And if that's the case, I'm very intrigued to see how Tom Thibodeau finds minutes for Obi. And if he's committed to that and will let some of these young guys learn, make mistakes and develop, as they still try to win. I still think the Knicks can try to do both and have a pretty uh, exciting season for the fans. I think the fans will be fine with that as long, Victor, as they're seeing the development from the young guys. The key is seeing the development. I think if the fans see that, they'll be fine. But we got to wait and see. But in your opinion, has a a chance, has a chance uh, Grimes will be starter uh, because so many Nick fans, so many channels, profiles, groups, né, talking about this, uh, preferred Grimes than Evan Fournier. Evan Fournier can be uh, interesting with your three points, né? but mm-hmm. uh, Grimes is so bad, uh, so better in defense. Uh, oh, much so, better. Much, so much better in defense. Uh, in your opinion, has a chance uh Chibodo <laughs> I, starter I, Grimes I, see that I, I'm more confident that Grimes will get minutes and possibly start over Fournier than I am confident that Obi will get minutes because I think I need to see it more I think that what Grimes has going in his favor to start is that you're going to have you know you don't have the best the strongest backcourt if you start Brunson defensively that I'm talking about Brunson along with Fonier. But if you start Grimes with Brunson, that, inc- you know, Brunson, who's a, about an average defender with Grimes, who's a really good defender on the ball. Now your backcourt defense is better. Grimes also is a pretty good shooter. And so he gives you that three and D kind of player. Uh, Fonier, we know he can shoot the ball in the threes, like you said, Victor, but he's not giving you much on defense. And this is where he might be better suited coming off the bench. But I think it's I think it's a position Grimes should have a shot to win. I think he can win, and I think Thibodeau would be motivated to play him because of what he can bring to the team on the defensive end, helping to set the tone early. So, in my opinion, yeah, I think he has a good chance to start um, this year, and it wouldn't shock me if training camp ended and Quentin Grimes was named a starter at shooting guard because I think it's a pretty good lineup if you've got him with Brunson, uh, R.J. Barrett. Uh, Julius Randle and you know Mitchell Robinson there's a couple guys in there who've shown really strong defensive effort and can set the tone um and we know what Grimes can do in terms of shooting the ball as well too if he starts to be able to create like we saw a little bit in summer league I think that can even open up things for him more and we know Fournier is not like the best creator with the ball in his hands but I do think Fournier can still have a great role on the team and be a good yes. scorer off the bench uh, but I think if you're trying to maximize your starting lineup, Grimes in the starting lineup is, is a lot better. I think that's more likely to happen. Will Obi get the minutes? I'm not so sure, but I feel good about a chance about Grimes being able to start for the Knicks this season. And uh, before I, I make it uh, the last question, uh, I saw, for example, Stephen Smith talking. 
É, the Knicks never make nothing. Never make nothing. Ah. So, in your opinion, Knicks, uh, a new rumors. Do you can tell for us uh, exist uh, a new rumor in New York? Uh, for, for example, Carmelo, Shai. Mm -hmm. Exist uh, uh, new rumors in, in New York about the Knicks? I don't think, you know, there's been a lot of, there's been two things. You know, once Donovan Mitchell didn't happen, all the talk went to who's the next star that's going to come to New York. I even asked Mark Berman who's the next star is going to be linked. And a lot of rumors, he he even had reported about Shea Gilgis Alexander, SGA out of Oklahoma City, a, a point guard there. I don't know how much juice there will be to that because you've got Brunson here now. And they play the same position, although I think SGA is a much better player than Brunson, although I like Brunson. SGA is a much more skilled player with size and the ball handling and all that. But I think you'll hear him rumored a lot to New York. Pay attention to how Oklahoma City does. They probably aren't going to be taking that next step like they thought they would be with Chet Holmgren being injured and out for the season. Um, I think you'll hear that. I think if this is a long shot, but I think if things don't go well in Portland – with Damian Lillard, you can hear his name, but I still don't think that's high. Uh, another one that Mark Berman had mentioned to me when we did an interview was, you know, the Knicks have always had an eye on Devin Booker with the Suns, but Devin Booker's in a good situation right now with the Suns. It would take things going south with them for that to happen. Leon Rose was his agent. Um, I think those mm -hmm. are names you're going to hear, but I'm not really, I don't really think there's a clear-cut favorite player that the Knicks are going to be rumored to in terms of a star to get. However, this is the NBA where sometimes you can't predict things and a star player that you didn't expect to be disgruntled that wants out of his team will come up. So I think it's just wait and see with the Knicks. As far as Carmelo Anthony goes, I know there's a lot of Knicks fans that want him to come back in terms of nostalgia. I don't yeah. see it. I think the fit that makes sense if Carmelo is going to sign with the team, and I think we could see this in the next couple of weeks, I think the fit that makes a lot of sense is Boston. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they had Danilo Gallinari. Gallinari obviously had the uh, ACL. I believe it's ACL. I believe I could be having an injury wrong. It's a knee injury um, that was really bad for him, and he's going to be out for the year. So now the Celtics need another forward who could shoot the ball. And Melo kind of fits that. He shot the ball better from three the last couple of years. He should be able to fit in, and I think he could help a Jason Tatum and a Jalen Brown coming off the bench. He kind of fits into that mold. Um, of players giving some score off the bench. I think Melo's going to want to go someplace where he could win, where he can score off the bench. I don't. I think the Knicks is a nice story if he comes back, but I also I also feel like for this Knicks team, Victor, they don't need a, a former superstar who was here with the Knicks from the past. You need to just let these young guys be on their own with their own thing and build their own identity. I don't think bringing in a Melo really helps the team in any kind of way. Um, you know, becomes sort of a circus around Melo and maybe it's his farewell song back with the Knicks. And all, all the while, a lot of us like seeing Melo in the orange and blue. I don't think it's the best thing for the team. He probably takes away minutes from a guy like Cam Reddish um, or maybe even Obi Toppin. I, I, I don't, I, th I think it's a pipe dream. I don't think Melo's back with the Knicks. I think he ends up somewhere and I'd say look at Boston um, or some other team, you know, maybe Miami. Uh, some team where he can help off the bench with some scoring. I, I just don't see it back with the Knicks. And I, I think, you know, the, how, how the Knicks do, and one last thing I'll say, Victor, how the Knicks do this season is important. And I'll keep coming back to the young players and why it's important is if the Knicks play young players like Grimes and Obi Toppin, those two particularly, even Cam Reddish, quickly, you see these players play well with more or some of those, if one or two of those players take a leap in their games, well, now that mm -hmm. brings the value of those players up. And if there is a star out there that the Knicks want to trade for, now they don't maybe have to give up as much in terms of picks because you have young players under controllable contracts you could trade whose value has now gone up. So that's the even more of the reason why if you're the Knicks front office and coaching staff, you've got to play the young players because you want to try to show the development and bring their value up. If Obi Toppin plays well and you could move him or it's easier for you to move Randall, now you have more flexibility in how you could trade instead of getting into a, a war where people are just trying to get 
the you know all the, the you know all the picks you can trade over the next couple of years. So this is why I think you got to play the kids and stay away from the rumors. Don't go back to the past, mellow all that stuff. Just play the kids, <laughs> man, and let 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 it be that. Man, man uh, if Knicks uh, got it, Donovan Mitchell, I I will believe uh, Carmelo back to the Knicks. But Donovan yeah. Mitchell don't come to the Knicks. I I don't believe uh, Carmelo come to the Knicks because uh, we we have Julius Randle in your position. Yep. And Obi Toppin in your position. And yep. I. It's not a good fit. There's no space. And now as the roster is, and I, I see your point, if they had maybe traded off some more players, it could be more likely to bring a veteran like that. But with the roster as it is now, it just doesn't make sense. Um, I know a lot of people want to see a nice story, but it just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> no. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the last rumor, no, no, not the last rumor, okay? Okay. Uh, one Nick fan talking with me yesterday, about uh this guy schroeder uh, the germany player ah. it's a agent a free agent but i <laughs> i don't believe i really 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 don't believe but i i i, I want to make the question for you too you do you believe uh, and uh i i honest honestly uh i i don't believe no i i, I don't i don't think there's any truth to that i don't see the knicks doing that there's no need for them to do that um i think their plans right now are to play jalen brunson derrick rose will be backing him up along with emmanuel quickly uh, getting some minutes as the first two guards off the bench I, 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 what does schroeder do for them there's no need uh for them to get schroeder right now and it's, it, he would just block further block minutes from young guys um I wouldn't even under, I, to be honest. I wouldn't even understand the signing. It wouldn't make sense for the yes. roster. Um, Me too. You know, if they had traded away some guys and then we're looking to pick up a vet like him, that would have made a lot of sense. But with the way the roster stands right now, no. Schroeder is a guy who needs to get with a team that can, um, and he's played very well in Eurobasket. He needs to get with a team that needs a backup point guard. But the Knicks, no, nah, no, nah, no, I. No, I, <laughs> I, too. I do not think there's any truth to that rule. <laughs> no, the, the these questions for uh, for the, the the member uh, uh, from my channel, and uh, I I I put né, for you né, uh, answer my my member né, this channel. But I I I agree with you. I I don't I don't believe in this guy in the Knicks really, uh, Dexter uh i talked with you in the last uh, interview and uh i will talk a uh, talk again yes. i just want nicks great again man <laughs> i just want nicks make i know man <laughs> i know i know you do and there's a lot of fans here in new york and around the world brazil nicks fans i know they want to see the nicks again the last thing i'll say is i think that Nick fans, I know you, you mentioned it before, Victor. Some Nick fans are like, hey, we, we never get a star. We never are able to trade for a star. We're never able to get a guy. We always have all this hope, and then we're let down. And I agree with them. I, I understand it. I understand that there's a lot been built up, and I think a lot of people thought Donovan Mitchell could be the guy. And But I do think the Knicks weren't trying to make it like the mellow trade that they made years ago and where they gave up the whole, the whole farm, they gave up all the assets. Um, yes. To, to, to get a guy. I, I think if I want to give some hope to the Knicks fans, I think that you should be encouraged that the team has moved pretty comp competently. Um, I think they've made some decent moves. I don't think there's been any home run or great moves, but it hasn't been anything terrible. I know the Kemba signing didn't work out and didn't look good with Fournier in the backcourt and they looked terrible defensively. But, you know, they moved on from that. They've addressed some of those things. And Let's see how this team is. Let's see how the, the kids play. I, I think this team is going to play hard. I think they're going to be rejuvenated. I think they're going to play with a lot of energy. Will that translate into wins? I don't know, but we'll see. And um, we'll see. You know, I think there will come a time where they'll get their guy, but I, I can't kill them for having their price and saying, this is where we're not going to go and this is how we're going to build the team and continue to develop. We'll see. It's the season, the season will be here right before we know. We got a little bit over a month, so can't wait. Can't wait for some uh, watch some Knicks basketball. Uh, 
I can't wait to. I can't wait to, man. No, oh, I miss. I miss uh, see the Knicks in the Garden and the NBA. Ah, oh, man. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much, Dexter. Thanks so much uh, again. Eh? Uh, your presence in in the Nick Fans Brazil channel. Uh, I like né, talking with you. You are thank you are you. A, a great 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 person. Uh, and uh, I love your job too. Uh, you. Your your interview with CP and Mark Berman. Oh. Thank you. I man. will I, I will I put that. link. I will put link uh, from you. your interview in description. I the, appreciate. I, I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. I appreciate uh, all the fans watching, Knicks fans, Brazil, and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do it again soon. We'll do it again soon to talk, talk some more Knicks basketball. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. And I, I, I hope, né, see Knicks in, uh, talking in your, your New York post and CP franchise, etc. Okay. Thank you so much, Dexter. And, uh, we, we talk in the future. Yes, man. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Queria comentar com vocês, né? Nós temos agora uma novidade aqui com relação ao Nick Fans Brasil, que o canal agora pode ter o programa de membros, né? No YouTube. Então, eu gostaria de pedir para você, você que puder, se inscreva também, né? Seja membro, seja membro do Nick Fans Brasil. Apenas R$ 7,99 por mês. Apenas R$ 7,99. E você vai ter vantagens exclusivas vantagens exclusivas por ser membro do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Uma delas, você vai ter grupo especial no WhatsApp, que você vai ter as notícias sempre antes, né? Vídeos e etc. sempre ditos antes para os membros. Uh, benefícios que vão ser estudados ao longo do tempo, que vão ser exclusivos para vocês. Além de sorteios, galera. Quem for membro vai ter essa vantagem, galera. Então, bora lá, participa e apoia o canal Nick Fans Brasil, pessoal. Beleza? E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! I do, are you down with the